It's welcome, by the way, welcome to part two of the simple uh, build of a chair. All right, so we used this template, remember, to trace that out. Yep. And we cut close to the line. And there's a reason for that. You want to cut as close as possible so you don't have to remove a lot of waste with a pattern cutting bit. Now, <laughs> this is the pattern. Boom. So what's going to follow this is a bearing. We'll go over that in a minute. Okay. But we now have to take this and attach it to this. Okay. And you're going to see there's a... I, you don't want any movement because you don't want a, what I call double cutting things. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, I've used a bunch of ways of attaching. We're going to use double stick tape and clamps because we're going to do this in a series of things. We're going to be using a handheld router. Oh, nice. You know why? Why? Because you need to learn. <laughs> That's what yes, we're here for, there's right? There's a variety of ways of doing this, but uh, we can use it eventually when uh, maybe next spring when we do a mass production of these with a bunch of friends that will uh you cut it with a jigsaw this time right right okay we'll go to the bandsaw oh we'll, we'll speed up we'll have a little production line the big boy oh yeah and uh then we'll have this template set up on this piece and we'll use the router table okay but for today i want to teach you how a router works okay and a few of the nuances. So, okay. what we're going to do is we're going to put some double stick tape on here. And then let me show you how it's done. Okay. Okay. See this? It's still a little tacky. Okay. But, just like me. But there's a lot to this. I'm going to put another piece right here just so you see the application. I'm going to cut it like this. I've also used in the past a micro pinna to tack it on. Okay. All right, but you gotta remove the pins and sometimes not all the pins come out. It all depends on what finish you put on it. If it's painted, it doesn't matter. But what you wanna do with double stick tape is you wanna rub it on first and then you just take the point of utility knife and you pull it off. Oh wow. See that? This stuff is worth its weight in gold. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to set this template on this piece. Okay. And we want to go by our layout marks. And what I always want to point out is, remember when we cut this on the uh, slide compound? That was our benchmark, right? Right. So when we put it on, and it's just a, a few things you gotta wiggle back and forth. It all depends on how thick that pencil mark was. All right, and we're gonna, what we want to do is we want to tack it on here just like this. Okay. And put pressure. Now, you're gonna also see running this we're going to start here and run it. So we need a couple of clamps. Okay. And as we do this, the clamps are going to add pressure to it. I'll do, the, I'll do the first run so you get the gist of it. Sure. But I'm going to take this out. Go ahead and hold that. All right. And we're going to do this and then come in here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put this on here. And remember, in woodworking, see this? In anything, you always want to use two clamps. Because I've seen people clamp like this and they're in a hurry. And, but guess what? That becomes a pivot point. That's right. a big time no-no. Okay, and let's just get a, a second clamp on there. I'm gonna, why don't you anchor it back here. Okay. That way there, we have it. All right, now there's another clamp I'm gonna use, because I want you to see this. See how it's a little squishy right here? Okay, and yes, I can clamp it, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clamp it with these. This is one of my favorite clamps. This is a, a click clamp. I'm gonna route over here. So this is going to be right here. Okay. That way there, it doesn't move whatsoever. All right, perfect. Good. <laughs> okay, so I know we have our template set up, we have everything clamped down. And so we're gonna route it, but I see about 10 different bits here. Which bit are we gonna use today? You can't count, there's only seven. <laughs> okay. Oh man, I could be so confusing, D. Um, I love this bit right here. That's a, and it's it's the funniest thing because if we talk about it, um, this is a bottom bearing bit. Okay, see this one, and this one. These are top bearing bit. These are, you'll they are all flush cutters. Okay. Okay. So look, some have a bearing top and bottom. Right. Some have a spiral. Some have an up spiral. Some have a down spiral. Some, like this one, this one, and this one, have compression spirals. Oh, wow. And the reason I chose these today, okay? By the way, I'll say it again, these are all flush trimmers. 
but it depends on how we're going to use them. Uh, like this one, I would probably use that, and I could use this for this application on the router table. Okay, I'm that I'm that person that likes to see the template. Right. Okay, or feel the bearing. I want the cutter below. Right. Well, that's just what's going to happen with this today. You're going to see the bearing. You really won't see it. You'll sense it. Okay. But there's a situation with this one. It has a bearing here. Okay. Now, this company makes one that just has the bearing up top, but this has a dual duty for wacky grains and change of grain directions. Oh, okay. It's easier to set it up and down and flip your template and piece in a router table. And you'll see on uh, one of my templates right here, okay, that when I was using at one time this one, okay, wood has grain to it. So you've got to read the grain. And with this, there's a tendency of what we call tarot. You'll hear it possibly today. Okay. Most likely not with this bit. There are some woods like uh, I've all, like cedar, dug fir, or some wacky grains that'll have tear out, you can ruin the piece. Oof. Because you have to read grain. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, especially on this piece right here. Okay. Okay? It's uh, how to read early grain, late grain in the wood. Okay. So no, we ran into that when we were doing our jigsaw cuts. There'll be, a, exactly, but there'll be a time where I'll teach you, and you'll see this, to climb cut. Okay? Where this is the normal direction of routing. Okay. Okay, but this is not. And I'll show you how to run a router properly. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to not modify this, but this is the bit we have to use today. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this uh, hex screw and I'm going to take the bearing off. And the only thing we got to be cognizant of is this little post right here. Okay. But I, I think we're good because we cut close enough to the line. This would hold us away from our line and our pattern. Oh, okay. Okay, but the beauty of this is as I run this, okay, with the router properly, and I'll show you a great way how to run a router, which way a router goes, all right, you're going to see uh, that you won't have any or less resistance. It won't kick on you. Okay. Okay, because it's a compression spiral. It's an up and down combined. This is the, probably the best bit system I have ever used for pattern and flush trimming. You'll see in a few minutes. Awesome. Okay. I'm excited. So, Big D, let's chuck up that bit. What have you learned so far? Well, if I'm trying to remember all my steps, I got to put it in here. I got the right collet on there. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to put it in here, make it flush, and then back it out a scotch. Yep. And then I tip it forward. Yeah. And then I'm going in, so I push back. Yeah. Get my wrench here. And then you just chuck it up, right? Yep. Should I bring it in? With bring it first? in. Yep, bring it in. Sometimes there's that little pause in there. It's a, it's a, a releasing collet. There you go. You'll get it. And put some oomph to it. Perfect. On the 1400 here, I put a table widener on here. And there's, okay. a, there's a major reason for this. We're gonna take this in two steps. This cutter we have on here can only cut down a certain amount. Okay. Okay, it can't cut the whole 38 millimeter thickness. Oh, okay. Okay, one of those other bits I showed you can do that in a single pass. But I figured today, hey, this is what we're gonna use, this is what we have to use today, so we'll rock and roll with it. Okay. Now, on the table widener, the beauty of it is not just that it's going to be a safer operation, it'll give you more uh, base to run on there. Sure. But the important part is this, there's some rare earth magnets in here, and instead of the normal chip deflector, okay, and you'll notice the length here from here to here, mm -hmm. you have some limitations. Right. Okay, where here, I'm able to use a larger Wow. Okay. Diameter bit. I don't choke it down, and that fits on like that. Now, there's a modification on this. You'll notice on all chip deflectors, there's a little line right here. Okay. And what this will help us do, not completely, but we're going to have to take this off at some point and do some routing. Okay. Uh, because we have to get in some of these inside corners right here. And if we had left this, and I trimmed the ears off on that, we're only going to get in so far with the bit. With this. Okay, so it's obstructed. See that? Um, it gets obstructed. So we'll come in, we'll come in and get that. Did you catch that, Chris? I did. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. But the majority of the time, so 
Are we going to use this every single moment? Probably not. Okay. But we're going to use it because I don't want to have to... <laughs> I don't want to have to have you two guys clean up <laughs> for hours. Right. Okay, we're going to get the lion's share of the dust. No way. <laughs> okay? So, so it basically I, it helps get a lot of the big pieces that we'll have coming off of this with the dust. I, if, if we did all the routing today, we would have a snow pile in here so that you're going to see where it's really minimal. All right. Okay. That's awesome. So, I want to capture as much dust as possible. All right. Cool. And then, I guess one other thing, this isn't gonna, this gives us the extra depth that we need for this 38 millimeter. <laughs> well, the dust route does. Dust route, okay. Okay, right. so you're gonna see where we're gonna route with the template. Then we're gonna take the template off. Oh, then we're gonna okay. finish the cut. Nice. Follow? I follow. Good. So what we did is you'll see where I'm gonna cut down to about here. Okay. Okay, and we'll have some left over. All right, we'll mark that, but look what the bearing is. I set it up right here. Oh, uh, I see what you're talking see about. See how it's going to look? So, uh, it's, we're basically, what we're doing is we're tracing with the pattern. I'm good at tracing. So, there's, there's sometimes I hear people, well, they'll try to route like this so they can see. You don't have to. You just have to feel it. As long as the bearing is set at the right depth, right? Yeah, on, okay. on here, on our... Cool. Simple enough, right? Yeah. You're basically tracing the pattern on the piece that you have cut close to that line. Nice. Okay, you traced it, now we're gonna trace it again. All right. Is there a certain way that we should run it, or how does that work? I don't wanna put that down. All right. <laughs> okay. So, over the years, I have taught people which way a router goes. I go, when I'm standing in front of the material, the router wants to take me left, so you push it right. Okay. I'm gonna teach you to be a pusher, not a puller. But it doesn't matter, but it's easier to push. Okay? okay, you'll you'll understand in a little while. All right. Now, I could tell you that if I'm doing an exterior cut, okay, that it's a clockwise pattern. But where you'll get confused is when you do an interior cut. It's counterclockwise on the outside if I'm using a bearing bit. Okay. Or inside it's clockwise. Gotcha. A little confusing, isn't it? Okay. So everybody pay attention to this. Big D, take your right hand. This one? Yes. <laughs> Make an L like this. Wait. This. Okay. No, I'm not a loser. Okay. Uh, somebody taught me this about 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is the simplest way I have taught so many people since. The thumb is your bearing. Okay. When you palm down, okay, if I point here, and that's my bearing, my index finger shows me the way. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. It is, we call it rule of thumb. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a bearing bit or a template guide, okay? You always, I, if I'm using a template guide, I put my thumb on the template like this, okay? Okay, And it tells me, oh, that's the way I'm going to take it. Or a parallel or a parallel edge guide, I always go in that direction. Wherever this lays, this lays, or a bearing bit. It's always... So when you stand to it handheld, Okay. It's different in a router table. Gotcha. Okay, but I always do this when I'm standing here. I go. Now, do you know the true way you learn which way a router goes? <laughs> By doing it wrong the first time. <laughs> exactly. When you put a big old bit on there, it's going the wrong direction. Sure. Chances are you won't go in that direction again. Okay, so that is the best way I have ever taught anybody new to a router, and even pros that I've taught. I always say, hey, make the L. Okay. Okay? Cool. Some guy in Connecticut showed me that. What I'll do is, okay. is I'll do the first run so okay. you can see. What we're going to do is I'm going to follow this edge and then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to follow here. You're going to see where the cup keeps me away and then I'll continue along this edge. Okay. Okay. Now, the one thing you always got to remember, uh, safety wise, is once I turn this on, you're not starting the bit on the material. I always bump it in and bring it away. Okay. Okay, um, you never reach down below the table oh, wow. because sometimes this cup may be bumping in there. You don't want to ever touch that. You want to oh. cycle the router off, okay? Okay, yeah. yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get her started and you'll see.
that I, my hand never came off of this, no. and I didn't take it off. I let it come down from the power, but you can see how we just basically traced that. Oh yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> so okay, he's my I don't know if you gauges. remember when we were looking at this. Come over here so you can see this. <laughs> Remember when you were learning how to use the jigsaw? We are very close, but I think we made it. If not, Woo. that's what they make sandpaper in that round over a bit. Four, but hey, there we go. We're good, but look how clean that is. That's You're going to notice where I came back a little here. I saw that. Now, that's why I always hold the router like this in close proximity to myself. Okay? Because it gives you more control. It gives you more control. I just naturally put it at a 30 degree when I'm running it. I did watch you. Shift it. Yep, and that okay. shift was to swivel. Look, look at this right here. Okay. Now, the really old, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the cup off. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to get that. You're going to see how much dust that makes. But right now, what we I just cut right here. This place would have been filled up. We get the lion's share of it with that cup because that awesome. that blocks it, so it has time to come back up here in the dust extractor. And it directs it right at camera. Right at the camera. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take this, and I'm gonna finish it off that corner. And we're left, we're left with this little ledge, but you'll see how we'll take care of that. Oh, okay, and that's when we take the template off and we go back. Because uh -huh. then the bearing still gives that same. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the clamp over. Good. Feel pretty good? Yep, that's gotta go back. I feel that. Yeah, that. Nice, is, huh? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is these hearing. Okay. You want to listen to the bit cutting. This sounds really funny. It's hard to discern with this uh, ultra sheer cut, the upward downward spiral compression. But if you ever hear like, it's not shattering, but it's chattering a little, You'll hear it splintering. Okay. Stop. Stop the machine. Back it up, and cycle it off. Okay. okay. Um, we may not hear it because this is southern yellow pine, and the grain, uh, early grain, late late grain, are very uh, highly spaced apart. We'll talk about more on the other piece and grain direction on that. Okay. Okay. But if you hear any kind of splintering, just stop. And you'll see me go like this. That'll mean stop. Okay, right. let's rock and roll. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on this. Okay. Okay, you're just tracing the pattern with that bearing bit. Okay. So let's get started. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Awesome. Can I do some? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me that. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna carry it here. So the other thing I want to point out is before I remove this template, I feel along here and here. Okay. okay, and if there's any bumps, I'll go back and retrace it, and there's a reason for that. I want the router bit to remove as much as possible and eliminate one of the things I hate, sanding. That's right. Okay, so sanding. just double check your work before moving forward. With your feeler gauges. With your feeler gauges. <laughs> ah, you're learning. <laughs> Good job. All right. We trace as much for the height as we possibly could with this, with right. the bearing following on here. We're left with this little ledge. Okay, so what we have to do to get this is take the pattern off. Now, this is something I wanted to make sure everybody got out of this video. We have a bunch of double stick tape on here, and we use some clamps on there. Here's the situation. Don't try to pull this off all at once. Take it in steps like this. Because guess what? This template is about six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. I don't want to break it. Oh, no, no, no. So if I took this and went like this, I would have ruined the template. So you just take it and slowly break it away. Because that tape is totally unbelievable. Okay? Now, there's another tip I want to show you. <coughs> You know what that is? That's a cabinet screen. Okay, so feel the top here, and I'm just gonna take this. See how I'm rubbing this? That's some 
um, residual glue from the double stick tape. And look, rub your hand on here. And look, here. and look, you'll feel it. Look. Yeah. And just like that. So what we're gonna do is I'll scrape one, I'll have you scrape some. God. That way there, the router will run really smooth on that. I'm gonna have you scrape that one, okay. Good job. Good job. Flip it around. Okay. Watch. You know what it is? You're, you're cutting the uh, late grain. This is, I'll, I'll describe it to you. See this right here? Mm -hmm. The dark wood is uh, late grain, or yeah, late grain. The white is early grain. Makes sense. Okay. Do you know where they came up with that? That's spring wood. That's summer wood. In other words, the the white pot is less dense, and that's in the spring where they got to get all the nutrients from the tree when it grows. Oh. So usually the whites are a lot wider than the lates or the summer. Okay. Okay. That's just the growth rings of the tree. Well, Early green, late green, and you got to really pay attention to those. Okay. So we got. I'm just going to scrape that. We got some. Okay, one more spot. Okay. Right. Oops. Big right D. Here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have you. Let's get around. Look, you got it. Yeah. Okay. You're moving so much. And let's just scrape that residual off. Okay. Yep. Put some lymph in there. Now you're talking. Now you're getting Ooh. a scrape, bro. Now you're Ooh, talking. Look at that. Okay, and I think you got it there. Yeah, I think we're It'll make a big difference when we start routing. Cool? Cool. Okay, so we removed the template, but we gotta finish this little bit up, okay? okay. You're gonna see where we can get it now. The bearing doesn't matter, it's riding on this. On the finish. On the finish pot. So now we're just gonna flush trim that little bit left over there. Okay. Okay? Perfect. It's simple. We didn't have to reset depth or anything. That's awesome. That's what we're compensated for. Efficiency, baby. Yep. cut I've ever seen. Oh, I know, dude, because I'm good. Wait. I want you to feel right here with those feeler gauges. See how there's a slight bump in there? Yep. Okay, so what's going to happen is when we put the round over in a few minutes on here, okay, if what happens, that bearing is going to follow right. this. Okay, you know how I don't like the sand? That bearing, when we do a round over, will follow that little ridge okay. and that will transfer to the top of it. Oh. So you'll see that. So the best way to work that right now, so you don't have to sand both sides, is just, and you'll see how it appears, those yeah. little ridges, and that's as simple as it gets. Okay, let those disappear, and it just makes this operation go a lot smoother. Yeah. Okay, definitely. so you won't feel the bump in there. Cool. Sounds good. Good. Perfect. Okay, so we have the chair pot done. Mm -hmm. Now for the back. All right. Let's get that done. If I can find my uh, my uh, knife. I'm trying to do what you did earlier. With yep, the... pick it up. Exactly. That's how you do it. Mm. <laughs> I think I got a new knife, looks like. Is that my knife or your knife? It's mine. See? <laughs> that is already done. <laughs> I, I've done this a few times. He's learning. Well, I'm Come learning. On. Come on. Plus, I think this one came in my Happy Meal. Okay. Two weeks ago. <laughs> so, what I'm going to have you do is where was our benchmark on this one? Oh, uh, we still have the cut on the side. Right, the so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to line it up here. Okay. Now you gotta be careful because you got some fresh double stick you Got a lot more tape this time. Yep. So, I'm trying to. So you're gonna get it down there. I mean, it looks and you pretty, cut pretty good close pretty to good. these lines. This was the second piece we did, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. and here's the other critical part is right in here. Okay. Okay. This is the one we got to remember. See, it just shifted on us yeah. a little bit. Okay. Actually, I'm going to say we're good. So you're flush down here. Yeah. So let's tack it. Pretend the pattern is on top here. We're going to be going in this direction. So watch. 
as I come around here, I want you to slow. Okay. Now, with this bit that we have on here, there's less tendency for tear out. Okay. If I use some of those straight fluted ones, it wants to rip this uh, off. Okay. But with that bit, it's a more of a shearing action. So there's less tendency for split up, but still you want to slow down the router. Okay. Okay. If not, you got to take the router back and come like this, and I don't think we're ready for climb cutting. So it's also this way too. If we look here, we're going to come in here, and then we're going to swoop in here like this. Okay. It wants to tear out here, so you got to slow down. So slow on the curves. Yes. Okay. But going into the curve, you're going to be fine, but coming out of the curve, you're okay. not. Now, and you're going to see over the years where we build jigs to really compensate for that because then we're going to be working with some cool wood. Now, with this one, we swoop in, but when we come out, it wants to tear here and tear here. We're not going to go here because that's our benchmark. Right. But this one, we can just swoop in and come out. Okay? Sounds so good. you'll see that as we go. Okay. <laughs> got to be careful because I want to do this whole thing, but I want you to learn. <laughs> okay, so I'll have you step in here, and I'm going to have you come right over to here. And then I slow down on my way out. Right. Okay. So you'll avoid having to climb cut. Okay. We'll, we'll teach that in a different one. Okay, so you want to start back here. Perfect. There you go. Actually, right up here. There you go. Okay. Right there. That was absolutely perfect. Okay. And there's a reason I'm saying that. I started to hear that little chatter in there. Mm -hmm. It wanted to tear out, but with that bit, that's the best bit on the market. It just, it kept it from ripping out or getting tear out. Good job. Awesome. Okay. Now, I could, like you were saying, I could hear the tonal shift. Since I'm a, I'm a music guy, ah. I could hear the tonal shift. When I got here, I was like, okay, so I knew I need to slow it down and kind of compensate. So yeah, I definitely could hear what you're talking about. Tonal shift. This guy right here. Dude. That was my band name <laughs> in the 90s. Awesome. You are getting better and better at well, I had this. a pretty good teacher. No, 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 no. Look, that is, I just like to see where you're getting more comfortable with the router because the router is the most versatile tool in the shop. I did and feel this here. Yeah, you felt it. It wanted to, it was a little bump, right? Can we go, should we, can we go back and clean that or are we sand that later? We'll sand it later. All right, so we're, we're moving quite along here, uh, but what's next? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just finish this up and I'll have you do this. Uh, hey, what are you doing? My name is Zach. <laughs> no, not yet, we're almost done, Zach. <laughs> he really wants to be He really wants to clean up. <laughs> it's the clean up guy. Okay. He's the fourth man in the lineup. Hey, oh, there you go. Okay. Absolutely perfect. And that's end grain, too. So that right there is a difficult cut, but look at, look at the feel of that. I can, I can feel it while I was that pushing. That is amazing. It was a lot more. route a bit. So let's just finish this up again. So should I start here? Yep. And go around? Okay. Don't start on. That's yeah. your benchmark. You want to, nope, start just like this and go in here. We want to take this off, right? Right. And finish this up. Not yet. Not yet. We have to do the initial. Ah, uh, that's this. right. Because once you start moving a template around, you lose benchmarks. Okay, so we're going to take this to show you something really neat about this. Okay, we're gonna do that initial cut, but we can't use the cup, can we? No, there's not enough room there. Right? Okay. I'll have you do the second cut on this. Okay. So let's, what I wanna do is I wanna put it over the bench and not on a hole, because I wanna get it the lion's share of the dust. Oh, that makes sense. Because now we don't have to block it, the template's blocking it in. All right? Your thumb is your bearing, so put it on the edge. So which way am I going? So we're going this way, which would be clockwise. Yep, but always go like this. I'm going this way, then this way, then this way. Gotcha. Got it? Yep. It's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> you said thumbs. Okay, so 
I'm All not right. gonna do this. So make sure the that's off. off. So what are you gonna do? I would probably center it in there. Yep. Start it off and then just go push ahead and to start one it. side. So it should probably start on this side. Whatever side you want. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now Chris, I want you to zim down in here and check this out. Pull it away. You guys see any dust? No. That's Holy why cow. a router that hooks up to a dust collection is paramount. Cool. cool. It's okay. Good. It smells mm. good in there. Yep. Good. <laughs> it's a toasty morning. Okay. Very good, D. Don't ruin Sedge's template. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can, uh... But you want to know something? That's why I build a template a little bit thicker than with quarter inch. Okay. Now what are we going to do, Bubba? We got a feeler gauge it. Yep. We don't really have a lot of stick on this time. Uh huh? There's not really, like, a lot of, there's a little bit over here. Yeah. It's just that you don't yeah. have to do this, but you'll feel the router hesitate. Check this out. See this? You can feel it, right? Yeah. But if you take your scraper, okay, and I'll make a pencil mark, run your scraper across that. See? Look. Oh, wow. See, the, see how it's dashed now? Run it yeah. again. Cool, huh? Good. That is cool. I just wanted to show you that. That's your early grain look. Early grain, late grain. Yeah. That's so crazy how yep. it spreads out like that. Yep. That's why that's why sanding is so important or or hand planing and scraping something is so important. Okay, don't get carried away. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's almost got a chair to take home. Almost. <laughs> Don't mess it up. <laughs> I already did. I mean, don't do it. Either. Okay, so you know what you got to do on this one. Yep. Don't do this yet. Nope. Wow. That's about the best route I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. Finish it up. Let's go. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Boy. And Big D, did you notice? How I didn't remove the router, I let it come down from speed. Ah. Aha! Aha! So what this is, is probably where we angled the jigsaw a little, but that's okay. exactly what tear out looks like. Now when we use the round over bit on this, a lot of that'll come out. Okay. But what I would do is I just take a sandpaper and hit it with that. So okay. Yep. And get a lot of that out of there. Good job. Good. Good. Okay, perfect, Much perfect. Better. And one more, I think we need to do that a little bit. Fair okay. that in, yep. Okay, so can I give you a tip on sanding? Yep. All right, so what you're using is this pot right here, mm -hmm. okay? And in essence, you're using that right there. What you wanna do is you wanna do the whole thing like this. Okay, that way there, you have a tendency of rocking. Yeah. Here, you'll stay crisp, so use the whole length of the block. Okay. Follow? And that will fair. Look how that just disappears. That'll fair in. Pretty simple? Yeah. It goes a lot quicker. Yeah. Instead of concentrating on that little area. Uh, Sedge, it doesn't really fit. So. <laughs> okay, so what we have to do... That's funny. Watch, give me this. Okay. I'll show you. It does fit. Okay, look. See how that fits in there? Okay. All right, what we need to do is you see these little edges? Mm -hmm. We have to, and this is why I chose this bit, this radius. I have to put a radius on this so you'll see that radius fits oh, okay. right in there like that. So go ahead and let's chuck that up. All right, And let's, let's go. get to it. We're gonna put a knight on both sides, just a round over. We can do it. Yeah, hey, hey. hey, thanks for chucking up that round over bit. That's my third time. So, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting there. Remember, repetition, repetition, repetition. 
and the right techniques. Okay, so setting up a profile on a bit doesn't have to be difficult. This is the way I've, I've always done it. I come down here and I just bring the flute down to the top. Then what I always have done is I always have a piece of scrap. What you don't want is to create a little line with this tip right here. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, so what I always do is I come in here with a piece of wood and I check to see. That'll give me my round over. Okay. In other words, you don't want to end up with this. Check this out. You want a nice, gentle round over. You don't want a round over that has a little edge like that. We call right. that a fillet. You don't okay. want that. Some people, will, some people will say, oh, that causes a bead or something. No. You, because now you have to sand it and you flush it. We only wish love sanding. I love sanding. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we'll get the dust extraction and get routing. And now what that does is that just breaks the edge. Yeah. And gives it that radius we need. So what's next, man? Uh, I mean, we've done everything I can think of. Okay, we get that profile on there. Let's give it a dry fit. Dry Step fit. right over here. It's your chair. I'm just going to move over here. Let's see how it goes. Oh man, look at that. Bring it all the way down. Oh my God. Nice and tight. Oh, perfect. So there you go. Great job on learning how to use that router. Yeah, you did a great <laughs> job, man. You got your basics in there. So, the only thing we got to do is we're just going to do a final sand, clean it up, throw some finish on there, but why don't you give it a dry fit? With my big butt. Sit down. <laughs> all right, here we go. Camera's rolling. There we go. Oh. It's your first chair. Oh, my oh. God. Perfect, perfect. Hey, where's the cleanup guy? <laughs> there he is. It's time to clean up, baby. <laughs> hey, and remember, be positive and stay sharp.